Okay, so following on from my last video about how electric turbochargers work, I thought I'd go into a few of the disadvantages to electric turbochargers. Because on paper, when you first look at them, it seems like they'd be perfect and you'd want to use them everywhere. But in reality, that's not the case. And this is perhaps exemplified by the fact that the Bugatti Chiron, the latest really hyper hyper car, is not running electric turbos. Instead, it's running sequential turbos. And there's actually a very good reason behind that. So let's get into it. Now, the first reason is, to truly capitalize on a set of electric turbochargers, you need a hybrid infrastructure in your car. If you want to run just the turbo by itself, you're going to be recovering more energy than the turbo is probably going to be burning. You're going to need a big battery to charge the turbo, to get the energy into the turbo and to take that recovered energy. And it's kind of going to be wasted. You'd be much better off having a pre-existing battery for your existing systems for your wheel motors and then have your turbo charging that and then have it feeding back from that battery. And that way you're not adding additional weight and you're actually improving the efficiency of your vehicle. And this is kind of shown in Formula One where they have a fully hybrid infrastructure like this. So the system works quite well. The next problem with an electric turbo is compressor efficiency. Now, when you're operating the sweet spot of the turbo, it's gonna be the same as any other turbo. But to capitalize on that advantage of spooling the turbo lower down in the rev range, you're going to be working that compressor at an inopportune point in its compressor curves. Now, this is some example compressor curves or an example compressor map. So this is airflow on the bottom and pressure here. And this is the pressure ratio. And if you imagine airflow is roughly consistent with the RPM that your engine is doing, you can see that at low RPM, we're on this side of the map. And if we try to maintain the same boost, pressure ratio is basically our boost. So we can see low boost condition is here, high boost condition is up here. So if we're trying to get a relatively low RPM, relatively high pressure, we're actually operating the compressor at a relatively low efficiency. Now this will mean more heat generated by the compressor itself, so a higher cooling requirement. And it will also mean that you're wasting energy to do this sort of setup. Arguably, if you've got energy to burn, it's not an issue, but it's just not ideal. And these compressor mapping issues lead on to my next point, which is the third problem with electric turbos, is that you have to design them to not surge. So compressor surge is that doo -doo 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 noise that you're hearing, the turbo flutter, if you will. It's not good for compressor wheels, but it's also just generally not desirable from a turbo standpoint. And there's a surge limit. And the surge limit is basically when we are at a very low air ratio and a very high pressure ratio, that will generally cause our compressor to surge. So this is why you get that doo -doo 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 noise when you lift off if you didn't have a bypass valve or a blow off valve, because as you lift off, the air is banking up on the other side of the turbo, your pressure ratio will go up a little bit and your airflow will also go considerably down. So that's why you get surge because the compressor's got nowhere to push it. So the compressor surges. So as a result, if you want to spool at a really low end on an electric turbo, you have to design your compressor so it's got a really wide surge range, okay? It doesn't have the surge limit over here, it's pushed much further this way. Problem with that is, is that any compressor that has very favorable surge characteristics generally won't be as efficient in the sweet spot. So you're compromising. And if you were to run sequential turbos with each stage, as in the Chiron, each stage optimized for the RPM range you're operating in, you could get two turbos working at a higher efficiency without being near that surge limit because your first set of turbos comes on down low, your second set comes on up high. So you get around this surge problem and the compressor efficiency problem at the same time. The fourth problem of the electric turbo, back pressure. If you are harvesting energy from your exhaust, something's gotta be giving you that energy. So normally the turbine isn't taking that much power to spin the compressor, but if you're trying to take that electricity, it's gonna take a lot more, you end up with pressure in your exhaust system. Now this pressure will be felt at the pistons. The piston and the cylinder, the whole combustion chamber, will see an increase in back pressure. Now this will mean that on the exhaust stroke, scavenging will be reduced. So sort of the ability to, to get all the exhaust gases out of the chamber will be reduced. And also you're going to increase your in-cylinder pressures for a given level of power, which will mean increased chance of knock. So increased back pressure, I think everyone kind of knows, is a bad thing unless it's too low, but increased pressure, back pressure, generally bad, harvesting energy from your turbo will increase your back pressure. 
And finally, and perhaps most obviously, an electric motor has to be added to your turbocharger assembly. Now adding this is going to up the cost because it's another component, it's an expensive component. This will up the complexity and it will up the weight because you are adding in this extra part that wasn't there before. It needs to be wired up. It's quite heavy. It needs some form of cooling depending on the setup. So you can see why adding the electric motor is a problem. And that's five problems with electric turbocharging. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and hopefully see you next time.